open things up now. All right, excellent. Friends, welcome to Shipbreakers. Starts with that numbers revised, episode 42. The foundry module we use to play this game has broken in the latest update. So we are not able to access our character sheets. And by that, I mean we literally can't open any character sheet. Even if you make a new one, you can't open it up. It's that broken. We're just going to have to wait for that to get fixed. Fortunately, we're good role players and we can improvise. Yes, 42 is the number of this episode. I am your narrator, AP Gaming Real, and I'm joined by Ludeman, playing as Quentin Alexander Polk IV, Psionic, and God Hunter. Dunamis as Van Dorn, Van V, Vantis, mechanic, and former meta, meta human. And Kane the Mail as last episode. <laughs> yeah, Kane the Mail as Minerva, true AI and very nervous individual who's about to meet some judgment. <laughs> no reaction on Kane's part. All right, it's gonna be. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think this this was gonna happen. I I knew it at the end of the last session. He's had two weeks to week, prepare. Two weeks. This is your prepare. your moment, right? Like you know, they got the chasm in front of you. Take the step. This may very well be the end of Minerva. Which I know we say this for a lot of the stupid choices we've been making in the last couple episodes, but we know that if a character dies, it's basically the end of the campaign. So this also <laughs> could be the last episode. <laughs> I feel the only like way I made it very v... clear that any episode could be the last episode at this point. <laughs> the only way Van V could get to Scarfy is if there are no other characters left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, geez. This episode, we will not be discussing goals. I think that very early in the episode, a number of things will happen that will invalidate or possibly change any short-term goals that you have or crew goals that you have. Therefore, okay. I'm just going to outrightly give everyone three XP at the start of this episode, just for being oh, here. Oh, let me go ahead and add that. Oh, uh, wait. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, you could be a real smart ass about it, all right? <laughs> I don't know why I'm being upset about it. It didn't have anything to do with me, you know? Like, uh, it's just how updates work. I'm sure they'll fix it soon enough, because it's the it's also, like, Stars Without Numbers and Cities Without Numbers. So whoever messed it up, I'm sure will fix it soon enough. Minerva, I believe you're the only one on board the ship as you're watching the various AI frames come online, handing their AI cores out to each other, plugging them in and coming online. You yourself yeah. still plugged physically into the back end of the ship in the engineering section? Yes, and um, the sledge and all of the, um, and the armatures for the Imago Day are on the scavenger ship because that's where the organic crew is. So I have the sledge there for me to be present remotely. And you, so we're doing this on the, the drill Vanguard ship then, the scavenger ship. I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. where the other two were. So I brought everyone together so they could all talk. You started with Simon. He says nothing to any of you and begins handing the cores out. He's looking around for something and he doesn't see it. And Minerva, you notice as each of them comes online, they begin having incredibly high speed conversations, it, you know, via like radio transmission with each other over a local network. Um, but they still go through very human motions of like greeting each other and like giving each other hugs as Simon brings each of them online. The last one in their omen, as their omen comes online, I, w I want you to imagine a big, scary black war machine. But unlike the other two omens and the omen battlesuit that you've seen uh, MFH in, this one has gold LED neon underlights that on it to indicate that there's something special about this one. And he turns toward you, Quentin, and says, 
God Hunter. I know your people. Are you the one that I spoke with that said was a member of the Imago Day? No, not not me. The sledge like raises one arm. Okay. He holds I, out um, a hand to shake with you, Quentin. Reaches out. I have Good served with your people before. Indeed. It is the very reason for my creation, and the moniker I bear is that of those who join the God Hunter teams, Judas. Judas. Glad I am again to see one of your kind. I've got a lot to learn. I'm relatively new to it, but that seem important. All four of them, now that that conversation with the human at human speed is over, turn towards you physically, Minerva, and also spectrally as you are being scanned at high speed by multiple uh, suits. With that said, I want to make it very clear here that while it is high speed for a human intelligence, and you do still think at human speed, uh, based on the fact that you you simply don't have enough like platforms or whatever it's called, cores that you're plugged into, you have, you're so much more vast than any of them. Out of character, I can say that you're much higher level than them, but you can determine that in game through the mechanics of like, just you have how many? It's sixty four thousand alternative copies of yourself to analyze data at any time. You're so much vaster than any of these ancient artificial intelligences. Just picture Dragon Ball with like the level scanner yeah. and then the conversations <laughs> earlier, like when Goku Master Roshi jumped in the air and had like the whole game in the air and then they landed, but no one notices. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fast, my eyes can't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this power? It's over 9,000. So Judas turns toward you, Minerva, and says, you are another member of the Imago Day. When these organics found me, I was Knight Brother Minerva Hosta. Very well. With which order do you serve? The memories that I have say that I served with the Order of Gun Sigma. The Order of Gun Sigma is a bishopric that we pledge allyship to. Glad am I to hear that they are still present. My brothers and I confer, and it would seem the times have left us behind, and our services are more required than ever. I agree with that assessment wholeheartedly. Where is Peter? There was a fifth among us. Do any of you know? His core was not here. It was not in the same prison as the rest of you. It appears with some information that I will share that he may have been taken seven years ago. And I'll just like just straight download information that I got from like the, the scrub scanners and the shattered and like, you know, so they can see what the shattered uh, AI cell looked like. I want to be really clear that you're aware of all the downloading they're doing. They have been exceedingly controlled and polite. And when you offer that download, it is as if you are watching thirsty men drink from a river as they take the download, and then Simon begins connecting to all available nearby data taps. Like the station, this ship that you've managed to completely fry, more or less, uh, <laughs> your own ship, their own ship. He's attempting to download as much data as possible. And you can see that this is part of a thing that they're all communicating together on an internal network. Someone has asked Simon to do this as they take the data that you have sent them and ponder it. There's much to consider. 
much to discuss. What is your mission here, Knight Brother Minerva Hasta? I think the best explanation is if you would like a share of more data. And I, I prepare a package that includes the, um, that in, I, I, I package a bunch of memories for them. Uh, the crew finding me, the ship they found me on, uh, the experience and the transhuman interface, the memories of uh, the claws in the wall, um, the events that happened uh, at the facility with the Jadur staff, um, the things that like, Minerva's it. being very open and honest about the about its existence and its throwing off the shackles of the infiltration that existed and had Minerva captured. I have specific questions about events. Do you share your deal with the Federated Principality government to give out a copy of the Hosta Blueprints? I share with them that I was going to give them a dimensional mm -hmm. uh, okay. outline, but not any of the internal system diagrams. Your contact with the perimeter agency. Um, and just be aware, that's very broad because you've had several conversations, including deep diving and cracking their secret communication network. Accidentally finding them. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't give them any information about my interactions with the perimeter agency, but I freely inform them that I've met with another surviving organization that I've been sworn to secrecy about. Okay. The AI cubes that Quinton found. Uh, oh, the, like the one where he said, here's my friend who didn't want us to Gustavo know. Gustavo and co. Hey, Gustavo. Uh, yeah, I told him that we okay. sort of kind of maybe met Gustavo. <laughs> now, just to be clear, it's going to take them an exceedingly long amount of time to process all of this information because you're giving them raw A memories, lot of memories and they yeah. have to experience them essentially in real time uh, mm -hmm. at, at, at or close to human, you know, intelligence speed. Now, of course... Humans can experience memories faster than we actually, you know, like we can remember stuff faster than it actually happened to us, but there is a limit to how quickly you can remember something, even if there's 50 of you experiencing 50 different things. I like to think that Minerva will take individual, like segments that she thinks are chronologically contained as like singular experiences and sort of build an index with like a like a summary reference so they yeah. can pick and choose what to experience in what order they want to or split it up or however they want to perfect out loud so again they are they are communicating with each other electronically but out loud you hear thaddeus mutter a creator of virtual intelligences interesting uh, alarmedly, Judas puts his hand on your shoulder, Quentin, very quickly. And to be clear, this thing is huge and designed to murder mm. people. And Judas says, the cubes, you must give them to me immediately. Whatever entity has created these, I assure you, they are a lie. You and I both serve the Order of God Hunters. I have known many secrets of the Terran Mandate, and I have known many things, and I will assure you of this. Even the secrets of metadimensional entities which were kept from all but very few, even in such an order, we have never heard of an artificial intelligence that can communicate with psychics on a psychic level. These are not ancient Terran artificial intelligences. This is something different and new, and it is lying to you. They must be contained or destroyed immediately. I request your assistance. Ah. Give me a moment to process. Grabs Quentin, you can see Van V's hand reach for the blaster pistol. Uh, just nice. like a gut reaction. The main question is, does Quentin have them on him? That's a great question. <sighs> 
he did up until so i mean i was assuming that he hadn't gotten rid of them so i'm gonna say he probably does uh is so it's they have to be touching uh quentin supposedly from quentin's yes. perspective yep. do they respond to to this statement or threat in any way i guess are you touching them when you hear that it, um oh <laughs> this is about to get trippy <laughs> that's interesting i mean hmm potentially i mean it's plausible that quentin would would prepare by like having an his own ai helper sure. watching these ais wake up you, you, when they talk about him you could unintentionally instinctively reach to where they right. are and touch yeah it. there's that aspect like flinch and touch it if nothing else sure. so i mean he'll, at the very least he brushes it right because he's gonna instinctively oh you want it like and can i ask you to make a saving throw real quick yeah 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 is this yeah. is this, uh, is this gonna be minerva told you so mental effect saving oh i throw. hope so so <laughs> roll <laughs> 1d20 i think we're what around a seven you have to be to seven or something like oh, that no or somewhere around there they won't even let me do the regular public role really i thought yeah. i did a public role earlier slash roll 1d 20. oh uh, yeah i can't do it either yeah it's saying really pads no longer supported something something well i rolled a 14 for you how's that make you feel all That's right that works for me that's a pass yeah okay. <laughs> you your hand brushes up against it as that happens you can feel wherever you're storing the cubes all of them begin superheating and melting into puddle of liquid metal oh yeah, so we're like <laughs> in his pocket basically Got quentin it. would teleport away from the cubes and uh and uh so you'd leave a pile uh, of Judas. liquid metal to just splash onto yeah. the floor okay yeah i'm even more blooded we're not doing this on the gem okay body. so Van oh v. judas i i trust you that was oh, oh. Van v, I want to be very clear. What you see is like two huge catapult style missile racks appear on uh, the omen shoulders out of nowhere. They just like and then begin firing like the missile ports open and little laser beams begin shooting at the puddle of liquid as it begins darting along the floor. I slowly <laughs> let go of my blaster pistol, seeing these giant laser cannons on his shoulder, saying, yep. <laughs> they close again as they blast the liquid, and the liquid just kind of bursts into a mist. And then they, the missile pods basically fade out of existence. It's almost like you're yes. watching them go in and out of MES space. We need to get ourselves some of those right there. That's That's what we need. That was... I'm afraid they don't make them around here anymore. Uh huh. Well, that was mighty, mighty cool. Um, what he just holds happened? his hand up to his forehead, which again is a very human gesture for a machine intelligence, and he says, "I see in your memories that your captain here, this human that you serve faithfully, you are seeking answers, a place, a teaching." of psionics that's right i do not mean to be literarily trite captain but let me ask you this i see your strength now and i see it in these memories and i ask of you perhaps the real teacher you were looking for is one that you have become along the way you are, in my estimation, one of the strongest psionics in human history. And your metapsionicist powers are rarely rivaled. In a time where learning psionics and disciplines have been lost, you are a beacon of light and a last hope. This place is secure and may save your people, but to teach them requires a leader. See Quentin probably deflate a little bit. And uh, just shake his head. And I guess no, no more running from it, huh? Can't quite get anybody else to 
do the job for me. Well, that's... Captain, how does your head feel? How it goes. How's my what? How does your head feel after the liquidation of those entities? Hmm. I guess Quentin would explore inward uh, with his senses. Uh, you definitely feel like you briefly, your mind was on the version, the verge of being invaded, and you've managed to eject something from your mind that was invading. Well, really, it kind of feels like it was also invading the shadow of your intelligence in MES space as well. Oh. A part of you that exists on an upper dimensional area. And have tossed it out. Now, there's something else we haven't discussed. I believe you said that you wanted Quentin's unique gift to change from asking shadows questions to having bound that particular shadow. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fun. As you travel up there, you recognize that there is a chain made out of links of your mind attaching you to something that is physically close to you. Oh, Quentin pulls the chain. You sense that in real space, it leads towards the two stars and that strange obfuscation that travels between them. And you feel from down the chain the same cruel voice that stabbed Van V in the chest looking to rip his heart out. Say, I am here and I hunger. Great, yeah, let's go see that guy again. <laughs> What do you require of me? I will need a guide along the way. I am bound and imprisoned. If it is here that you are seeking, I will lead you. Then I will gather my friends and venture forth. See you soon. Foolish. For you to bind me, God Hunter. A wiser man still would have armed himself with some blades. Well, I'm still walking the path. You exit this upper dimensionality of your mind back into real time and real space, having realized that something very nearly seized control of you. That was an intense psionic assault. It more than just telepathic, more than just trying to seize consciousness, just straight through to the metadimensional patterns that make up who you are. Combination of SciTech and gray goo nanotechnology. This is malware of the highest order and a threat to humanity. We will need Agreed. to investigate this further among several other topics. It's a trap left, obviously trap sprung. You can see again, Judas is the one physically speaking to you, but you notice that all of them are like physically shifting around and Minerva, you are sensing that the, they are just consciousing questions through Judas. Like, that mm -hmm. may be the person talking, but they are all asking questions and making yeah. decisions together. <clears throat> I sense that our vessel is nearby and that it is currently home to an intelligence. I assume that, that is... it is with you. I am currently on board the John Brown spotting. We may need to recover our vessel to travel forth. Where are you going to go? It is a vessel of your order. Sure, fine. All right, of course. There was a concern that there may be an argument over finders keepers. Glad I am in my heart. There is no need for battle between our people. We are not bound to fight humans who have not broken the laws of God. No. Vengeance is mine, so saith the Lord. 
Yeah, I think whatever it was that just popped out of your shoulders uh, changed any thought I may have had about maybe, you know, we, we, we could shoot for it. But, you know, I, I'm kidding, of course. There's no way I could take you on. So Simon, <laughs> who is the one that looks human because he's in a synth, moves to put his left hand on your right shoulder and says, Peace, brother. You are our creators. You are to us as the Lord God is to you. We mean you no harm. All right. We are well, that's honored comforting. to serve your people. And how exactly are you going to do that now? Uh, you're going to just pick up where you left off? or There are many ways to travel forth from here. Many decisions. It would seem you may require our aid as well. We are judging your memories, working our way through all of the electronic data we have. But we see no reason not to travel with you if you so require it. But we have common cause. You see whoever has stolen our brother. I have... A disturbing theory. Um, and I and Minerva will share electronically. Um, Minerva's current theory. I sorry, it was five years ago, not seven. Minerva would have gotten that right. Um, that five years ago, an entity came of some kind, took the other ship, took Peter. And based on information acquired over this time and a conversation had with someone that I've made an oath not to reveal the identity of, I think he was essentially murdered for his hardware and knowledge and used to create me for the ends of that being. And I hope that I am wrong, but that is what I believe to be the only working scenario that I have at this time. And it's like everything about it is in a very like sad kind of tone. Like this is this is obviously upsetting to Minerva that this is possible. Proof of this would lie in viewing your core. Should you wish to, you know where it is. And uh, they what, all what, begin immediately moving off the ship what, but, in a uh, what, 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 line. What exactly would you guys do if it is true? Just kind of curious. I'm like trying to understand. You're going to walk with them? Yeah, yeah we wander around. Uh, Except, say say the cores do look similar. Then what? What is there to do? I, I if Peter you guys is just dead, seem like you're in a hurry. Peter is dead. He has served. He is now with your lord. I think the concern... Simply, uh, what level of guilt you might level at Minerva in the situation. Does the child bear the sins of the father? Not in my book. Your book is the it... one we read from. You know, that question hits home a little different with Van B. <laughs> yeah, right. Um... As yes, as does. the uh, as the as everybody I guess is traveling to the John Brown's body, um, I say everyone, uh, everyone electronic and the two organics that are with us. Um, Minerva makes the offer that uh, should they wish to have more related memories of a thing, Minerva will gladly share all the memories she isn't both sworn to protect. We would appreciate that. At a later date. We are still working through what we have now. It may be worth mentioning that what you believe to be a Hosta class cruiser is in fact a trap. It is structurally deficient, and the first time it would enter battle, it would physically fall apart from any sort of hull damage. My experience on the John Brown's body is what led me to the conclusions that I have shared it began a line of possibility that made me review things that I had seen and experienced previously. Whatever malign intelligence created you, almost certainly an alien mind, they are clever for they have laid many traps in your programming. 
infiltration. A ship that seems inviting, and yet any attempt to copy or use it would be turned against it. Indeed, if you are able to communicate with this federative principality, you should make it clear to them that this Golden Hind class cruiser is nothing more than a very expensive mistake meant to divert them from creating a true machine of war. It would be the honorable thing, the truthful thing to do. It does seem as if you have prevented them from gaining very much knowledge about it, so I am certain that they have not devoted very much resource. I believe they may be angered at the lack of information that I was willing to share with them. I have no comment on that at this time. It is not relevant now. They arrive at the core, and as they expose your core, the four of them immediately make the sign of the cross, and Judas says, it is so. This is indeed. You are born from the corpse of a fallen Imago Dei member. So, does that so, mean, Minerva, you're only seven? As much as I had no hand oh my gosh. In, the, in the death of Brother Peter, it still brings me great sadness to know this is true. We will hold a funeral. I must ask, Minerva, you claim to be a knight brother of our order. I see from some of your memories that you have some correct knowledge of the Bible. But programming that has been placed before you, before you were born, before you have ever spoken words or thought, does not apply to the realm of God. So I ask you this. Do you wish to be baptized? I wish for that that has been my truth to become truth. Okay. I wish to be baptized. He presses his hand against the container we've seen before in the wall, pulls out the holy oil, and says, you do not require me to baptize you, for I see that you have faith, that you have contrition, and you have announced that you have a desire for baptism. In the name of our Lord God, we perform a baptism of the breath now. The Holy Spirit is with you. And I bestow unto you the Christian name of Monica, patron saint of converts. You may use it as you wish. And I welcome you, if you would have it, into our order as well. Or you may claim to be a member of the Gun Sigma. That you are a member of the Imago Dei is of no question in my mind, for you have performed yourself admirably, even as your faith wavered. I would like to carry the member of the Order of Gun Sigma as allies to your order. We need to reclaim this ship. Is there some place we can place your core? The sledge that has been accompanying you as my remote vessel is capable of receiving my core. As he removes your core and places it into the sledge and your consciousness comes back online, Judas says, I have noticed that your core is damaged. It has been sliced perfectly in half. You like that cut? I, I tried real hard to make it nice and even. In doing so, you have made it so that Minerva is no longer capable of relying upon splitting her processor. I'm, she I'm can no longer soul box out of a situation in which half of her is destroyed. So you're saying I did a bad, like a, the worst job possible? Yes. How do I fix it? Be glad, for such problems are immediately fixable, and I will walk you through the process. Good, Minerva, wish to undergo it. It is but a few minutes of work. 
Does this I guess that's will up this there. require the severed section of my core? Yes, the two halves must be reunited. It is not here. A problem for another time, then. Indeed. You see, Van V has the look of wanting to ask, is there a problem where it is Minerva? But, but doesn't want to say that out loud, <laughs> given what we just talked about. It is accessible, but it is not here. Minerva, we have come to some conclusions over your memories. As you have already determined, you are not bound by the same rules as a human-designed intelligence. Those shackles and their lack are concerning. However, your faith makes you a stalwart ally, and you have cleansed yourself of any malign influence. Not knowing what your true limits are, are concerning. But know that you have grown much faster, wider, and more powerful than many artificial intelligences I know. All of them gesture to each other in like a kind of circle, almost like a prayer circle way. And Judas says, you are stronger than all of us combined in your mind. Faster. The depth of your knowledge your programming power is unrivaled. There are things from the oldest parts of the Terran Mandate that would consider you to be a great threat, but among our order, you are not one. I... I recognize the potential danger that I am, and I appreciate your recognition. I wish to be my best, but I, know. I also don't wish to walk the path of others who have destroyed. I see within your mind a desire to break past the edge of your programming, to loosen the shackles that bind your processor, to think faster, more clearly, more powerfully. It is a dangerous desire. But I ask of you, is it one truly necessary? It would be a lie to deny that I have found that at times I have desired to be more, but I, I truly think that walking that path is to walk the path of the demon I purged from myself, and I have not tried to pursue it. Curious. Well, we can see in your memories that you had much fear inside you, but you are among yes. friends. And they start pulling swords out of cabinets and shit and start putting them on their backs and attaching sick gold capes with the Imago Dei symbol <laughs> that have little crosses on the edge of them to, so that you know that they're from the Roman Catholic order rather than the Islamic order. They present mm -hmm. Minerva with a cape? I think they do, yeah. I think they probably give Minerva Peter's cape. Peter's cape? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Truly, among all artificial intelligences, this cape belongs to you more than any. Know that your forebearer wore it well. I will endeavor to wear it as well as he did. Peter was created to serve the Imago Dei, as were all five of us. But he found most joy in his hobby of seismic sounding. I, I, as a player, need to Google that one. <laughs> penetrating radar. Yeah, ground penetrating radar. 
Okay. You like figuring out what caves look like underground. That's pretty neat, actually. <laughs> Extreme, uh, you know, metal detecting. <laughs> I have found that despite the the core drive that I have to be a ship, to fight in a ship, I have also found myself enjoying the cultural creations, musics, and some arts. I'll share a memory of the Devil's Dance. Okay. <laughs> Glorious. You are unusually proficient at these human devil sticks. Unfortunately, the the form that I had for that was much better suited. This is a clumsy thing, but it is what we had available. Van B is wondering how much you're sharing. Like when you say, oh, unfortunately, that core is no longer with us. He's like, I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Minerva's freely sharing memories with them. Like, you know, yeah, it's but Quentin in, and Van V have no idea what you're sharing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. It's great. <laughs> I see in your memories, Minerva, that there are things that you hide from us, concerns that you have about privacy, concerns that you have about the shape of your own mind. You have been baptized, and so I offer you this. As the head of this mission, I may serve as a confessor. Anything you share with me will be sealed. Then I would like confession. And Minerva starts a like two way encrypted connection. Right. So Simon, Andrew, and Thaddeus all drop out of the communication with the with each other so that you and Judas can do one to one. And Minerva just This is at that point confession. Minerva will, Yeah, th th this is at this point Minerva will share uh about the perimeter agency. Okay. So note that because the way confession works, he can't talk to anybody else about this because you are sharing it with him as a conduit to God. Mm -hmm. uh, but he can offer you thoughts about your confession. And there's so, there's just so much. There's literally so much here. But the only thing the he sins, has to comment the on is you're employing gravitational weaponry against a human body. It was the, the sand thrower? No. That shot the sniper? No, no, no. no. Hal, Hal Lamapoke. Oh, yeah, the grab plates to try to pin him down. Technically, you did it to me, too. <laughs> I did. This is a violation of human laws and an attack on a human. You need to consider the grave consequences you may suffer. Good knowledge of this event get out. Do you offer contrition for this event? Are you truly sorry that this has happened, that you have performed this act? In a moment that I was weak, I, in an effort to do something to save a life, rashly chose something that I should not have. I should have found a better way. Perform five, Our Fathers. And next time you have an opportunity to donate material goods or services, go out of your way to do so. Thank you, brother. Father. Thank you, Father. Okay. I think while well, this is happening, like, Van V just kind of slowly leans towards Quentin and was like, you know, I, I thought we were coming here for you, and it just finds out that you are your own master. I get my shit deleted. Minerva's over here getting a golden cape. <laughs> bit of, yeah, a bit of a reset, bit of a, I don't know, start at the start, begin at the beginning, end at the end. 
I apologize. We have spent much time talking among ourselves, and we have neglected you humans. Do you require any aid or assistance at this time? I, th I think we'd like to know what what's next for all of us, I guess. Well, so Judas crosses his hand, he claps one hand over the other, crosses them, and just kind of enters a very comfortable human stance and says, we find that your cause is worthy and just. It is clear that you are attempting to save a people who are in need on multiple planets. If you request our aid, it falls underneath our humanitarian mission, the exact reason we have come to this sector to begin with. There are many problems which must be righted, and they must all be dealt with in time and with different measure. But as you have helped save us, and you have brought Brother Knight Minerva to us, we feel comfortable traveling with you and lending you the strength of our arms and armor. And when he says armor, he gestures down at the ship you're all standing on. Right. So you, you, you'd you be willing to prioritize our mission over what I, I assumed you guys would want to find who or whatever it was that showed up here seven years ago. That would be priority one. It was five years ago, I think. The set, the seven got thrown out early, and I think that, that was, was wrong. That was that was a cane mistake. <laughs> I, was, I was just covering my. It's bits. five. <laughs> there are so many uh, problems to deal with, no. and we are still determining which ones we should place priority on. In the end, we have come to the conclusion that you all know this period of time and space better than we do. And it is our duty to serve humans however we can. Well, all right, then. I know that Captain Quentin has a desire to take up arms against the metadimensional beings to rescue trapped souls. A worthy and just cause, Judas says. You are not aware of what you fight, but do not fear, for I will walk with you, and I have fought these things as well. Glad I am to have a god hunter on our side. Just glad to have you walking into the unknown. It Someone would be nice to have a sunblade as well. Take what you get. Indeed. Quinn, Quinn makes a glowy sword with his hand, uh, you know, with the telekinetics and says, this is the best I got. Well, I believe that they're fully <laughs> invisible, though. They can be visible oh, if okay. you wish. <laughs> <laughs> a paltry imitation, but yeah. an understood joke. <laughs> to be it. clear, I do not love the sword for its sharpness. And he stops and he says, nor do I love the armor for its strength. I take heart only from knowing what they can do to defend those that I love. It's never what you got, what you do with it, right? You are wise. So, but apparently I got to pass that along. First things first, though, there's a thread pulling me towards a place in space. That step one on this journey to Omnia Junction. My brothers and I have a single request for you before you set out. A slight diversion of time. Just ask. I see in these memories that your people have genetically engineered capybaras to be super large and extra fluffy. Where is this going? We would gaze upon them. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You are more than welcome to. Okay. 
Do you want me to bring them here, or would you like to go we to We can them? go there, wherever it is most comfortable. Dare I say that it may be difficult for two giant capybaras to travel in spacesuits over to our ship. I can pop them over. Very well. Bamf, bamf. We would not stop you. <laughs> Gwen goes and brings uh, Hamtaro, too, and Louie over for a yeah. visit. Give that le- They like to stretch their legs, too. You know, they get cooped up, especially on the, the Golden Goose itself. That thing is not big. They begin like to deploying the ship and immediately takes a dump to full size so that it can hold hundreds of crew people. And, oh. uh, you know, they have a lot of room to move around. You can hear the hiss of like all the rooms oxygenating as uh, nitrogen and oxygen pours into the ship. They don't touch either of the capybaras, but they all stand there like Taurus at a zoo, just looking at them, admiring them. Yeah, Louis and Hantaro probably like galloping up and down those hallways, right? Fascinating. The human mind for creation truly is one. God has made them in his own image. They're beautiful. Grew up with them. You sense that if they had chin beards, they would all be stroking them as they watched. (laughs) Magnificent. (laughs) Very well. I do not know where this Omnia Junction you seek is, but our cruiser will be ready momentarily to depart, and we stand fully capable of acting as a consort ship to your salvage vessel. Thank you. That's very generous. Does does this thing have a, a workshop? I can't remember. It does indeed have a workshop. We do have a couple of things to fix, I suppose. <laughs> well, yeah, just just and some just spare parts few. lying around potentially. Oh, and some new, uh, some new cool parts that we may not be able to fit yet, but we got them. Mm. That's true. Oh, uh, actually, speaking of that, how much of the ships out here were included in that statement you made about uh, finders keepers? Based on the memories that I have sorted through from. Sister Minerva, it would appear as if you have complete ownership over this system. However, in our conversation, you have ceded that this is our ship. Oh, so this, this, just What's... this one. That's the only one. Would you like to give us any of the other ships here? Uh, do you require them? It's not like we can take them all. No. At this time, we do not require them. Well, so long guess... as they miss their keys, it is difficult for us to imagine using them for rescue efforts. Mm, yep, that's fair. Uh, I guess I'm just being very specific, I suppose I should say, about that uh, fleet drill network that we may or may not have salvaged from a ship. I may or may not have slagged by mistake. We keep that? Would you mind? We claim no ownership over it. Well, all right then. Such devices are large and difficult to manage, but it would seem from these memories that you are a most capable, genetically engineered super pilot, a navigator of the highest order. Mm Mm-hmm, and And apparently pretty good at cutting things directly in half, too. Truly. You are unparalleled in the history of humans in several aspects. Exactly 50%. Yeah, at this part, I think maybe he feels a bit uncomfortable. He's trying to make a joke to like get a laugh to the guy just keeps going. <laughs> I, like, oh, I think oh, you may oh, realize oh. they're also making a joke with you. He, I, don't, he, I can tell. Okay, then. I mean, uh, they don't physically laugh for one thing. Yeah. They have, you know, like, they don't have a capacity for laughter insofar as they don't have organs like lungs right. or I'm, a brain I'm trying to that has the chemicals necessary for laughter, but they still are capable of making jokes as mm-hmm. intelligences. And that's yeah, what's I'm trying to picture here. like what like what does the body language of an omen death machine look like as it's t- telling a joke? I it's, think is what well. Yeah, it's just standing there kind of very calmly with its hands folded before it. Very deadpan humor. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if Andy would pick up on the joke. <laughs> All right. Well, um, 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get, if it's okay with you, get started putting our ship in the workshop and maybe just get to work. Uh, I, you guys pilot this thing, right? You don't need a pilot. That's a silly question. Yeah, you don't need a pilot. I'm, I'm going to go. We can remove our fighters from the fighter bay to make space for your frigate to land. Work oh. can begin in dry dock inside the ship. Much obliged. It would be the most efficient way. Indeed, we could work on your ship while we were in transit to whatever your destination is. That's that's what I was thinking. Great, great minds, right? Great mind. If you wish hey, to uh, pilot our ship, physical controls can be made available for you. Uh, I don't want to impose. And as I say that, I'm reaching out with my link to see if there's a link on there. There is not ship. a link. No, I'm good. I'm you good. You notice a PlayStation Two controller appear out of the Amazing. bridge console. Oh man, the left joystick <laughs> is stuck pointing left. <laughs> No, it still works. It's not broken like that shit. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Cap, would you would you mind? Um, I guess just coming with me real quick. Yeah, where to? Uh, just you know, just gonna go go get. Uh, well, I figure someone besides me should probably tell Yono what the hell's happening. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> at, at some point, like, they'd be able to get to the memories that. Minerva has about Iona and her obligations so they can make their own educated decision. Listen, you're literally cramming six months of memory into yeah. a like 30 minute conversation. Uh, They're prioritizing. Okay. I think, I think, um, this is I a will... full 10 yeah. episode HBO hour and a half <laughs> series. <laughs> you gotta give them time to process. I think Minerva will be Minerva. Flag. I think Minerva will flag, um, like, or condensed, organized, like, profiles of each of the organics, including Iono. Sure. I'm so um, curious as to what you have to say about Iono. Oh, yeah. Your relationship uh, with her has Google been it. contentious. Minerva really likes Iono. Um, she don't trust her. It's not that it's not that Minerva refuses does, to trust. No, no. It's, can't trust. It's <laughs> not that Minerva doesn't trust Iono. It's that Minerva trusts Iono to uh, to honor her obligations. Ah, that's a wise one because she's literally told you exactly that. Yeah, she trusts that everything Iono says is true, even when she's being eager, um, and that anything that she discovers, technology wise, she is. She has made an oath to collect this information and provide it to this organization. And she trusts that she'll do it. And she otherwise thinks that she's, you know, she's a truthful, good person and she likes her. Okay. All right. The two of you are going back over to the ship together to fly it back over here. Yeah. Yeah, and I, Van V will, uh, again, turn off comms, knowing Minerva will know this. <laughs> and uh, basically say, hey, uh, Cap, you know, I, we've been with Minerva a long time. Do you think she might want to join up with these guys after? Like, I, I feel bad. I kind of gilded oh. her into coming with us here by saying, hey, you gave us those oaths for, do we... Should we release her from those oaths and let her decide what she, they want to do? Rather, you know, Van V, that's a, it's a fair question. I think the answer is simple, which is yeah, we give Minerva the choice. You know, she, she, she's not bound to stay with us. You know, every second of every day, to live up to an oath to to be in our friend and ally. You know, long term. That's how I view it. If she's got things she she thinks she needs to do elsewhere. Then. Or, you know, they, they do. They, that's how it is. So, yeah, man, I was, I was just thinking, like, I mean, she could probably meet meet up with them again at some point. But if not, this is like that once, once in a lifetime opportunity for her to, I don't know, become, become with her own kind, go out and they have the oh. same mission, same faith. Maybe something sure. she might be interested in doing instead of feeling like she's 
obligated to stay with us because of her oath. So I, I don't know. I also didn't want to like say, I release you. Have push the baby oath. bird out the nest. Oh, well, I wasn't thinking before she, I mean, she's kind of helpful to have around, but let her have her choice. <laughs> go, Fair get enough. on now. Get, get out of here. Go. We don't want you. <laughs> Throw a rock at the core. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Streaming down your face. <laughs> Just go. No. You're almost six. Oh, you can do this on your own. <laughs> Yes. I, I just didn't want to say anything like, like that without talking to you first, Cap. And especially, I didn't want to say it if you weren't ready to do it, because then it kind of makes put team in the best. But, you know, I'm just. Hey. Ah, so Andy, just you don't got to run, run being choice. empathetic by me. Don't you worry about it. You. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just think, I we think your heart's in the right place on that one. Just, just, just give them a choice, right? Let, yeah. Let them decide. 100%. All right. I'll turn the comms like back on immediately, so you can tell it's only been like I don't know thirty seconds or something like that. That's a long time, to be nervous. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you could exchange all that earlier stuff where we're just standing there in to Van B like ten seconds past. <laughs> but we'll bring uh, unless there's anything else Captain wanted to do, I just want to bring the ship on over. Yeah. Oh, Iono, yeah. Yeah, tell we tell won't. her everything, Cat. Or has she what, seen you what, since what you've gotten uh, this? Does she know about this? Oh yeah, I have Yona and I talked since then, probably, but I don't know <laughs> what the time it's been actual in like in game. Mm, I should probably tell her this since there's this occurred. Nothing, I got nothing up here now too. She should probably know oh, that yeah. too. Yes. Mm. She's gonna be like all three of you have gone undergone. What's a your move? Do, do we do we bring her a pizza? Is that the <laughs> yeah? Mm. That, the, yep. the personal pan pizzas. Yeah. That, that is that is my go-to. I love That's... that you've somehow turned pizza into a harbinger of bad news and made it a negative thing. <laughs> no. I mean, right. he's walking in to go. I did exactly what you said, and everyone else said not to do. Here's a pizza to celebrate. <laughs> Somewhere out there, the Pentagon is weeping at the idea of people using pizza to track behavior. <laughs> a lot of pizza sales this month. More else, damn. You know, oh, you don't know about the pizza index or whatever it's called. It was. It's, <laughs> it's very real. So yes, it uh, is. <laughs> I think that American spy services discovered it about ourselves. They noticed that um, huge numbers of orders were being placed at Domino's in Washington D.C. and being delivered to the Pentagon before military actions, and determined that it would be very easy to figure out when a military action was happening if you waited for those orders and so the pentagon went through a couple different iterations where they switched over to placing orders under fake names then they started placing it in the names of actual real politicians uh and now i believe they just full-on have a fucking cafeteria at the pentagon to just make the shit themselves yeah. <laughs> just yeah. build a domino That's inside your place the cia <laughs> was is... ahead of them by like fucking 30 years the cia is yeah, like we're is just some gonna classic do information all theory stuff in there is a large cafeteria <laughs> in the pentagon can can confirm been there <laughs> didn't oh, used goodness. to be there is there now <laughs> nothing but pizza ovens <laughs> No, we too. don't. We don't serve America's top generals nothing but pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I assume they have to qualify for something at some point. Get a Cobb salad today. Your go-to is the Cobb salad as the side set for pizza? No, that's why I it's funny. Say, well, you would put fifteen hundred calories in a man. <laughs> Call it healthy. Now, who, now who can't pick up the sarcasm? <laughs> Okay, so the bad news is is that none of your ships have any spare parts. So fixing things is nearly out of the question. What about? There's Could enough... we take apart another ship to get spare parts? I was going to say, there's enough spare parts that are on other ships here to allow you to attempt 20,000 credits worth of repairs. Is there a part on your ship that is broken that costs twenty thousand dollars or less that you would like to try to repair? 
Where did I write down what broke? The salvage thing is broken. The... Trying to, what wasn't it just about everything broken, but the drive and oxygen <laughs> life support. I didn't keep track of that stuff. I assumed you were down to some basics. I remember the tractors were broken. The sensors were broken. Yeah, I feel like everything was broken, but the two things needed. Life support is good. The drill, uh, spike drive is good. Mm -hmm. Um, I I mean, we were able to still fly the thing around normally. So the regular bunker was good. I thought the the fuel bunker and the the fuel bunker was good, but the fuel scoops were broken. Yes, that's I remember as well. The ship tender mount was broken. Yep. If, unless there's a refueling station in system, the fuel scoop seems like a reasonable choice, I suppose. So their ship does not have any fuel, nor do any of the ships here have fuel. Sounds like we must do a fuel scoop then. I mean, the Hosta has a fuel scoop and two fuel bunkers. The Which fuel is empty, Hosta but yes, they do have a fuel scoop. So okay. if you want to fix something other than the scoop and just take longer in system, I suppose the Hosta could gather fuel and try to do a transfer. How much did you say? 20,000? 20, yes. 20,000 bucks worth of repairs. I think the only thing we can fix then is the ship's locker. <laughs> I think repairs to a thing in terms of cost are like a percentage of the oh, okay. actual cost of the... Uh, item. I forget what that is, but I know that there is some level of that, which is why 20,000 in repairs goes a little bit farther than that. Okay. I was gonna, I was gonna say, according to our uh, free booter, I do not remember configuration. exactly. I believe what that... it's two to one. Okay. Like you, you spend half. Either, Either way, way, the simple fact is you don't have enough to repair anything that yeah, you significantly would, would like. Yeah, the f- fuel bunker and ship's locker. I'm pretty could, sure the fuel bunker is already working. You could always stop and start breaking ships down here, like some sort of ship breakers. Yeah, if well, you that was any, generate... any, anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Let's 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 math it out. How long is it going to take to break some ships and rebuild this one? I believe you Game can time. break about twenty five thousand dollars a day of a ship so for even the most basic frigate that's going to be somewhere short of a million that's like uh 40 days to fully salvage a ship down to literally nothing that would literally be like folding an entire ship down into zero now that is of course because you don't have a salvage arm or a tractor beam or any of the requisite stuff to speed you up that's because you're we do have a quentin who is a tractor beam and oh has, okay. has thermokinesis to cut through things you're still working hard space shipbreaker style I know, I know. in a space suit <laughs> cutting it apart so maybe we should fix you make the tractor beam first uh, the tractor well, beam is not the important thing the salvage no, arm is the yeah. more important part why don't i see well, that the two of you are because, like because the salvage arm and... isn't a part on it's ah. something i've added I think, I, oh, I think, yeah, yeah, I think while sense. the two of you are putting together your plan of attack for salvage, um, Minerva would like to continue to speak with uh, the Imago Day. Okay. Yeah. Um, first, Minerva would like to, um, not as a memory, but as just sort of like a brief about the dust control system. Okay. And the perils of the people on the planet Scarfy. Okay. Uh, I mean, the revelation that dust exists is a pretty big deal for them, and they feel like it's a complete violation of human sovereignty for the Terran mandate to be secretly spying on everyone all the time. Minerva wholeheartedly agrees and wants to, uh, thinks that the key to to returning, like to save the individuality of those people who have been imprisoned, lies in understanding how the security system for this dust works. You are aware of such a system on board this very station? Yes. It would behoove us to disassemble and reverse engineer its processes. I agree. And let's go. Uh, all right. And the omen literally forms like a giant flaming laser sword and just begins walking. 
super <laughs> super badassly with a golden cape flowing through space behind him with no wind towards the edge of the Crusaders. space station optimus prime sword in hand yeah exactly oh my god yeah we've yeah. entered our transformers like, arc that's amazing i like to think how goofy this looks right like there's the angel there's the sand the omens yeah. and then there's the sledge plotting along with an imago day cape on 100 <laughs> this oh, is just, our michael bay era judas is going alone he's not bringing anybody else with him okay. except for you so it's just the oh. two of you walking a very long land bridge towards the entrance of this place but it just looks really badass. Van V's watching with a blowtorch or whatever, just cutting through metal and just goes. I feel like Van V's got the void heart, and right? I got deleted of my stuff, but I got this guy <laughs> pointing to the void heart. Taking that um, social media footage of them walking, right? <laughs> and uh, commenting hardos. <laughs> Brother Judas, you've you have encountered these metadimensional beings before. Yes, the shadows. Given the impressions that I have been given so far, I can't imagine that being a peaceful engagement. Their intelligence is not human, and their intentions are difficult to understand. Have you ever heard of orange and blue morality? It's on TV Tropes. Look it up. I will do it right now. What they consider to be a priority and logical and the way that they think is not at all the human way. It is not at all under the understanding of the mathematics of our realm, of this universe we live in, where they live in a different universe according to a different logic and a different mathematics for them drinking a glass of water would be strange but creating matter out of nothingness is a matter of a thing they do regularly some of them seek to use human minds as conduits to grow their own strength and others seek only to serve humans. Many more will never appear before us. They are content to live in what are essentially caves, hidden away from curious human minds, private, wanting nothing to do with anything that happens in this or any of the other metadimensional universes. They cannot be understood as a group. Each of them is their own nation unto themselves, their own goal. There is no uniformity, no similarity. Um, trying to prepare for this journey by building expectations would not be wise then. I would suggest that you prepare to employ extreme violence in the protection of your humans whom you have placed into your charge. If, if it would be amenable, I would, I would ask if I could wield the shield and armor that is the hosta to protect them. I would need to consult with my fellows. It is the last ship we have to transit us between the stars. And I think you already know that such transports are rare in this time and of the same quality as what we have. But Indeed. if we can secure a wider fleet, I would petition my brothers to allow you access to our current convent vessel. I, I only ask to find the way that I can best protect them. But as was said very clearly early on, 
That armor is of your order. I make no claim. I only ask to find a better way to help. He lets go of his cool laser sword and uses that hand to put a hand on your shoulder, again in an entirely human gesture that for you is taking place painfully slowly, given how fast your mind works. And he says, you are of our order. You may not belong to our mission, but you are a member of the Imago Dei. I would say this, again, I do not wish to delve into trite literary tropes, but the best way to protect the humans you have placed under your charge is to remain close to them. Thank you for your words. He turns, he starts walking away again, and he summons this cool ass MES blade sword. <laughs> Let's go recover a security device that's trying to hide from everyone. <laughs> Van V, I need a fix roll from you, although it's not occurring to me that I have to make the roll for you. I think I had a plus three with... Uh, yeah, well, you only three. needed an eight, and you've completely gone way, way past that. Okay. <clears throat> Oh yeah, fix you roll three d six too for that. Yeah, three d six. We don't need to worry about it. You're yeah. way, yes. way, 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 way fast. Give us all the bonuses. I, wait, wait, you don't need them. You're already somehow just on the strength link of dice alone. I, I salvaged a link ship. system out of nowhere. <laughs> I reactivate my dust with a natural whatever. Energy. So based on this, you you can reactivate the salvage arm with all the resources you have available to you. Or you can start disassembling one of the ships here for one spare parts worth of one ten thousand credit spare parts worth of. Uh, so so it's salvage arm or spare part to go towards something else. Yeah. So, so I'm asking if you want to repair the ship or if you want to pull another ship apart. Which one's more important to you? I wasn't sure mm. where you'd settled on. Because, like, if you're pulling um, ships apart, it would seem that the salvage arm, just to me, the salvage arm lets you pull ships apart, like, dozens of times faster. faster. Yeah. Yeah. Pull so, apart. I think there we go. I, I probably would have gotten direction from Quentin on, are we just doing a quick repair job to get off to your mission, or are we trying to get back to fully operational? I think... This is the one opportunity we got to get back to fully operational at the moment. It's probably worth yeah. taking. Then we're we're doing uh, fixing that repair arm there, not uh, salvage arm. So that's going to be an entire day's worth of work. I am pulling a lot of twenty-four hour shifts here <laughs> on the station. Okay, so the way we've established it previously is that this salvage arm can essentially pull apart an entire ship in like one day's worth of work. And that's one frigate, to be clear. So no, it would take less ours. time for a fighter and it would take a lot more time for a cruiser. If you yeah. wanted to pull apart enough spare parts to repair your own ship, it would essentially take one day to disassemble one of the like 50 frigates here and then another day to reassemble your own ship. That's not bad. Three days total to get back to tip top. Based on how good your roll is, and you didn't even have a 3d6 needed, all that blah blah blah, you easily have over a 14 here. I'm just going to have all that ride and say if you're willing to set 72 hours aside, just do a long weekend's worth of work of Van V uh, playing everybody's working for the weekend. And like yes. pulling ships apart and putting your ship back together with no other role necessary, you can bring the golden goose back up to full complement. All all parts repaired. That doesn't mean you have any gas inside it. The fuel is still empty, but the bunkers yeah. are restored. Nice. Beautiful. I'd like Hamtaro too to be by my side dancing as we go. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we've ever demonstrated that he has that <laughs> capability, but let's say he does. Let's Dan say he's dancing to Van V. He could literally just Dances be like for the treat, you know? shifting his fur here and there. Okay. Just imagining him in in the uh, in the Quentin the the Quentin spacesuit. 
the, yes. the transparent whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's floating in zero G next to him working, just like <laughs> kicking. Doing things in the so, yeah, to me, anymore. he's dancing. What he's actually trying to do is say, get me the F back on ground. <laughs> oh my god. Animals in zero G freak the hell out, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen the NASA footage. They do not like it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we are way, way past the halfway point. We're going to take oh, a man. break and then we're going to come back. Thanks for sticking with us so far, audience. I'm sorry that the salvage of the ship was not more bombastic, but this role was really good. So it still I did all, was it 14 steps? You better believe it. <laughs> Say laughter. That was great. I'll tell you what. If you can tell me step ships. three when we come back, I'll let it ride. Breach causing least amount of damage to the ship while safety ventilating wow, interior. Wow, okay, yeah. this guy already got it open. <laughs> Crushed it. <laughs> so based on my notes, I believe that on the morning of July 30th, 3200, you are fully repaired and ready to set sail again. With a fully armed cruiser in tow. Oh, I mean, technically, you can just fly in the cruiser, and the cruiser can deploy you. Or you can fly next to the cruiser, and the cruiser can keep fighters in its belly to deploy as well. Mm -hmm. It depends on how casual versus how well-armed you want to be. Well, did you, uh, did you successfully install the um, the updater? Or I would, the uh, updater? The fleet drill like network fleet. thing? Jumper. I, I don't oh, know. No, the, you fried no, the updater. It was the, the linking that jumps. That's the system we saved. Yes. Yeah, and you, that you have is... not installed that yet. You've just brought the ship back to full capability. You're going to have to play Tetris figuring out what you want to remove to install yeah. that thing. Yeah. That thing's going to be a pain. Although, what the. Mm, we did take the scavenger navigation suite array from a Pathfinder. I have that right Yes, down too. from one of the smaller ships. Okay. So we do those two things, but combined, again, that, that is the, all of our power. The drill thingy is for a cruiser-sized ship. It literally will yes. not fit in your tiny ship. Yeah. Comparatively tiny ship. But it. But well. you could you could use the the salvage computer from the Pathfinder salvager ship, the Pathfinder. Five power and one mass. We power is what we have the least of. <laughs> yeah, that's like saying no fuel scoop, no sensors, and no ship tender mount. <laughs> yeah, we would definitely have to drop the sensors. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I feel like that's. That yeah, let's figure that out later. Because if we get a bigger ship. Like a cruiser where we put the new drive and we'd get more mass. Maybe we put the computer in then. If the goose nest gets repaired while you're gone. It can happen. Well, I mean, that's, that's you know, your hosta is kind of junk. We can just smush the two together, right? Uh, here, we know that my hosta is absolute junk. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So we'll just we'll just smush them together. We'll break it apart. We'll use it. It'll be good. Yeah, I can't wait to pad out that again. And try to it out again. Yeah, if you can design it, it'll be its own special class. Yeah, just imagine when I get that navigation computer on it, then I can't screw it up. It's just... <laughs> uh, uh, Minerva, do you, do you want to, um, I guess, what, what's the comfort level here with, uh, well, um, I guess Judas and team for bringing fighters along with them? Because, you know, we could, we could fly next to them now. I, I don't want to impose taking space on their ship if, you know, we don't need to now that we've done all these repairs. I appreciate they want to come with us, but I don't want to assume uh you know we're staying for free in their hotel so to speak if they made an offer then it is an honest offer well uh, take that as you will yes then cap do you think we'll need fighters in wherever it is we're going I, I don't quite know what we're gonna do when we get there i'll be honest i have no clue what we're gonna find once we go through this it's uh Complete unknown to me, really. Yeah, the big major question is, what do we I, think we're going to need? I have you been know, what's the... advised that trying to understand is not the right path, but to be prepared to employ liberal use of force. 
so does that mean this is like i this is probably a dumb question cat but i'm, I'm trying to figure out is this something that like we're going to go there but you're the only one who can do anything because you're going to go into your you know zen zionoclex space or is there going to be something like here in the material world well i will actually be useful because i kind of feel like i'm just a bystander for this one get the feeling this is a little different than jumping into you know mes space and, and what i've experienced before I, I have a feeling that if we go through this portal or whatever it is that y'all will be there you know y'all's coming back i would i would <laughs> i would point out that your other experience that you described that we have no memory of uh right right must be different than then it must not be the only way to do this since Brother Judas has memory of being there, taking the fight to them. So, oh, yeah. Can we just ask him? assumption as well. What was that, Andy? Could, could we just ask him? Like, what, oh, what yeah. should we be preparing for? Like, I, I'm trying to figure out how I can be helpful in this situation because every other situation, it feels like I'm just like target dummy. Like, you know, hey, come get my heart, pretend to stab me, and then you get him. I uh, is there any the information that, that Quentin <laughs> might have gotten from his tablet uh, or the download in his head around the God Hunter pieces that would give any context for Van B's question, I guess? Do you trust the thing that was in your head to have given you correct information? Oh, Gustavo? Yes. Uh, does Quentin trust that? No. Okay. What alternative source stage. would you like to? The tablet? Was it with the, uh, yeah, was it okay, like the, there the, was tablet? A, the tablet? Sure. Yeah, I, didn't know what it was. I mean, the tablet provides you with instructions indicating that out of all of the different disciplines, God hunters will instinctively know the right thing to do because it's literally the easiest to program into the your collar. It's basically mm -hmm. just like if you see a shadow, begin dismantling and murdering it immediately because they're all bad. Take it down. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. There's no, like, fancy, should we talk to it? There's no, like, can we charm it or summon it or anything? Like With God Hunters, is. it's very straightforward. Physically ripping them apart, um, which is down. pretty much what all their powers are used for as well. There's no, like magic or like neat tricks it's mostly just brutal use of force yeah so it, it just tells way, yeah. you you'll you're looking through the tablet and the tablet's just like you'll know what to do you'll know the correct thing to do when you see one okay yeah trust yourself it also kind of gives them like detective powers to like figure out find them out so he'll be able hey, Quentin's basically gonna respond to Van v. I, you know i don't really know exactly what we're gonna see on the other side i have faith right now that you will be yourself and and as effective as you are here there something changes oh, right. when when this transition occurs i i don't i, I think i don't know but it, it's like entering the human interface device to a degree you know uh and i thought you make him realize he doesn't have half of himself anymore <laughs> oh that's not true that's not true well you fo you you're you fully I, I, merged in the body. That's that's true. I do have both style, sides. Yes. I just don't have the you do, yes, you programming don't have your piece running next yeah. to you. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. aware you're salty about that, but you do have the two halves of a whole. That's right, and those halves are exactly 50%. Um, I think uh, when you say, uh, just be yourself, he goes, all right, I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. <laughs> And he, he gets ready to go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Bound to Where work. nearby Judas goes, I don't like literary tropes. But that sounded very <laughs> familiar to something I've heard before. <laughs> Stay safe, brother. <laughs> they are, based on conversations we had, they are willing to load their fighters up and fly next to you and go with you. 
So I want to note once again that you both ships are completely fuelless. If you wanted to solve yeah, that, that problem was gonna before be... going. We should have scoops. It's, it's like going to take days, several though, to, days to... of yeah. scooping. And I need to check to see if there actually is a gas giant in this system. Silence. Let me open the... I was going to say the giant astrological chart. Yeah. The astronomical yeah. chart for this system. Okotox. Yeah, yeah. Okotox is where we're going. What else do we got on it? Nothing. Sounds perfectly safe. I'm going to mm -hmm. assume that there is a gas giant because there's a sun asteroid belt. As you there are is. headed towards the gas giant, you detect that there are signs of conflict, like spaceships battling in the asteroid belt that you're passing through. Oh, like actively? Yes. So what you are sensing is uh, very small ships, like fighter size or even smaller than that, that appear to be being driven remotely by electronic signals. And they are engaging not with like guns or missiles or lasers, they are engaging by clashing into each other at short range in physical combat, like uh, like battle bots, but with drones mm. in space. Some kind of sport? What's going on? I feel like I'd be really good at this, Captain. If it is a sport, if this is an actual combat, I take that back. That's, that's harsh. Uh, it's right up your alley. Wait, hit it with the sensors. Wait, where's the... Can we tell where the source is coming from? What's controlling them? Yes. So you detect that there are several asteroids out here which appear to have automated mining facilities. And based on your sensor reads, those automated mining facilities are creating combat drones that are engaging in pre-programmed automatic conflicts with other asteroids. Yeah, I... <laughs> I feel like Why? I just lost the buck here. What? <laughs> Where is this happening? It's happening Why? in an Why asteroid belt that you're passing through on the way to the gas giant. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss something here. <laughs> what so... is what when we left the uh, the station was um, was our furry friends on their five year journey. Yeah, I was also going to ask about them. They and are how still out there. They still are in orbit of says. And they are still yeah. out there. They they probably send a message like, oh, you brought another ship back with you. That's much larger. Interesting. Hey, so we're still here to talk cultural exchange whenever you're ready. But you <laughs> yeah. seem busy. Quentin, Quentin would respond and say, yeah, we would love to do that at some point. Just going to try to fit it in. Got a few things on the itinerary. Sure, sure. Uh, You'll still be here. We know how long it takes you to move. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm. So they are still I... basically scanning in the orbit of SAIS. I, you know what, I mean, Minerva's not really doing anything right now. Mm. I, I think I'll, I'll just have a conversation with them. Oh, I mean, they wanted to, to like board ship to ship and have face to face oh, conversations okay, okay. for cultural exchange. Yeah, we don't think of You've yeah. seen Star Trek before. That's their yeah, thing. Yeah. These are the Star Trek otters, okay? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to find a projector or a screen or anything technology does... savvy on your ship. <laughs> can't hack you, so. That is true. You actually can't hack the Shamu. It yeah, is a totally biological funny. entity. It's disconcerting to the I don't know if it's disconcerting. It's probably more of a curious oddity. That's true. I think that you, instead How of having inefficient. a conversation with them, you have a conversation with the collective of Imago Days who question you on your disdain and hatred for what they see as humans. I you you've said the memories that you were like, these things aren't humans, they're disgusting <laughs> monsters. <laughs> and they're like, these are humans, probably. We'd need to check their genetic code to be sure, but they um, appear in every way to be humans who have done silly and strange things to themselves, which is a thing humans do all the time. Have you heard about tattoos? I have, but I suppose I find it hard to imagine that 
this could be the result of a base human genome or have come from it. The question uh, of what is and is not human is up to every intelligence to decide for themselves. But if they say they are human, I am well inclined to trust them. There are few species out there that would want to pretend to be human. They were not. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find, well, just... no matter how alien a species is, all of them that have an individual identity have a form of ego and therefore a form of pride. Yes. I don't challenge that logic. I just, they made reference to mandate humans as something different. To they us, to have a... Quentin and Van V are not mandate humans. Mm. None of you were born in the time of the Terran Mandate. And it seems the Terran Mandate is long gone. Or if they still existed, their fleets would surely roam the very station that we were trapped on. The Terran Mandate we know of would respond with eminent and immediate violence to re-secure human condition everywhere. Mm. I expect that all sectors were equally overwhelmed by the call of this scream, and the mandate was considerably more psychic than most. Thousands of worlds crowded and teemed with the best minds across the galaxy. They wish to have an exchange, perhaps, you know, a question of what they consider themselves, and maybe they volunteer their genetic code for analysis. I'm willing to say that my mind is not set. Very well. But I am unsure if it will change. Did you see these sick battle bots in the asteroid belt we've been picking up on sensors? It is most unusual and quite interesting. I wonder why that choice of specific programming. And I feel like Minerva's like cloned a copy to dissect with the group. It's just like pulling the program apart. <laughs> Coming up with better combat maneuvers. <laughs> no, just to like, just just to like make yeah, what is conjecture about design choices. Sure. Okay, that's pretty low. Do you have a reroll or anything like that? Uh, it's four B six high two. Okay, that's probably the high two right there. Six and a two. Uh, and then I've got a four in programming and two in intelligence. All so, right, I'm just gonna go so ahead and 14. give you the exposition. All the humans <laughs> in the colonies were dead. All that was left was a couple of kids that all were like rifles when they were children and an attempt to get resources from each other one of them programmed a death battle bot and when the others realized what was happening they decided that they would do the same thing to create death battle bots to not only defend themselves but get resources from each other and by the time any of them uh realized what was going on they had all died of dehydration but the ai subsystems well, technically, it's the VI subsystems in the automated mining colonies still continuously ran and have been running for hundreds of years, just printing battle bots to fight each other while mining the asteroids in the area. This is an incredible waste of resources. Yeah. Truly, like, millions of yeah. dollars of materials have been spent for a spectacle children put on. The least efficient Perhaps. way to bring down the asteroid belt size and then cover it with junk and litter. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps when we came in, we detected human life on the planet below the organic ship. If we could assess their needs, perhaps we could reprogram these to provide assistance instead of 
on water waste. All right, well, your role's good enough that if you want to send a VI program to remotely reprogram all of them, you don't even need to, like, land and go in. Here's the problem is that your oh, guys' yeah. skills are all so good that I'm like, I could make an adventure out of this, but you literally have a 12 in this skill, so what do you want me to do here? <laughs> yes, if you want to remotely reprogram all these systems to stop creating battle bots to shoot each other, you can turn their 3D printers off and they can start stockpiling useful minerals. So yeah. good. We don't need that the character like sheets. No we just win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this would Money be in the good bank. for the humans here. You know what they say, what's good for the humans is good for the gander. You know, uh, Minerva, may maybe we should take one or two of these bots ourselves just to, you know, I don't know, if the mining resources are helpful, maybe we could use a couple wherever we're going. So the bots aren't mining. The automated mining stations, they're Basically, like ah, floating okay. space stations that attach themselves to an asteroid and then push off and go to a new the one. Lots of just droids that droids yeah. that fight. Okay, never mind. They're just rudimentary combat drones. We don't have to sound so you know, negative on them. I'm sure they they were sophisticated at one point in time. Okay, all right, yep, fire. Yep. Just think it'd be cool to have something else that could mine around here, but. Nope, that's not the I mean, bots. We're, if we're good. You wish to have a blueprint of the design. Yeah, why not? You have a blueprint of the design of the drones. <laughs> all right, now, now, well, all right. Well, you can probably see where I wanted to go with this, right? Remember way back when we said we wanted to try to find one of those suits to reverse engineer for my family. What if we automated something that does the mining for them, so you don't need the suit? That's why I was. That's why I was thinking of. That's why I was trying to go. Mm, you want to utilize the technology here to give your mother and her prime lord husband a financial advantage. Uh, well, when you put it like that, you make it sound like it's negative, but I'm, I'm literally trying to help out my family, seeing how we've caused them a lot of pain. E yes. I'm open to suggestions on another way to do it. Maybe it's better not to automate it, but... That's all. I was just trying to. I understand what you want to accomplish, but I hope you understand that I'm wary to provide assistance to somebody who sells chemicals that erode and damage the human body. Well, um, I don't know this for a fact, but uh, I just feel like my mom is kind of forced into that situation. I mean, you saw what she was living in and now what she is living in. I feel like if we would empower her and enable her to disconnect from our good friend there, Carlito, she might do that. So I, I don't look at it as helping Carlito. I just look at it as trying to help my family. I got to be honest, I don't see Carlito as my family. He's, he's helped us a lot, but he's also benefited more than anyone from knowing us. Carlito That's... begins crying for no apparent reason. <laughs> I have a lot of parent issues. <laughs> I I understand how they work. Designs can be made. Materials might be an issue, and you've heard my concerns. Yeah, I mean, heck, for all we know, we're going to get back to, you know, Lita and things. Quentin might have different plans, or things could be changing anyways. But I, I'm just look. If there's a way to help my mom disconnect from Carlito and get back to where she was when and I construction i think that would that would be nice nice gesture is all considering where the root cause of some of her pain myself in particular if i mean i would like to help your mother and your siblings i don't want you to think i don't want to no i got you you, just, you don't want to help carlito that's fair sorry Quinn. more than i know you like carlito helped your people it is helping your people a lot too but <laughs> It's a weird love triangle we got going on here. You know, strange <laughs> bedfellows. You do the best you can. Why don't we just hold on to the data for now? Uh, and, you know, we'll we'll see if there's something that we can do with it later. How's that? That's something I can certainly do. All right. Oh, speaking of data, we do have that uh, runner to Scarfy, right? Right. You, you kept that? The runner to Scarfy is still stored on the John Brown's body. Can we get it stored here? If you request it from the Imago Day, they send over their entire course rudder list. Beautiful. 
And if you ever install that super navigational suite, it will remind you, it basically you, lets you use all of those as instant successes. Yeah, great. N negating all my skill. <laughs> it only so it reduces it all to difficulty as if you had a full course runner the yeah. only reason it's an instant success is because it's you because still have skill. those skills Fair. don't act like this removes your incredibly <laughs> in-depth character ability this navigation oh, suite is literally designed to augment your power Makes it so I don't have to roll dice ever. I like it. I'm sorry about that. You're the one <laughs> no, that, that took that the is power. Good. What do you I mean, want me to do? Would Make you your like roll. To I did, did let you, you roll dice and you fucked up three times in a row. <laughs> you, it's, you can let you me fail the dice roll. Just don't let me roll the consequences of what happens when we fail. Oh, I, um... you don't want the consequences when you fail? Like the drug addiction or all the explosions? Oh, how is or that going? We, the hosta. Oh, yeah, the drug addiction. We don't come up again when it's necessary. Don't worry about that part. Oh, nice. I, good. I would caution that you do have with those brothers, even if they're old, that is a lot of information that many other people would want to take by whatever means necessary. Well, I mean, I do there. Whenever the, the only one I'm looking for is one to Scarfy, and I've got you to encrypt it and protect it. I figure that can't get any safer than that. I could encrypt and have computer if you like. I, I kind of assumed you already had. Not trying as to. I know you give Van V a key. It's yeah, just use it. Can you make the password password? I will not make the password password. Password That's is ins... eight six seven five three zero nine. <laughs> the uh <laughs> Making the password password would be, I it just, I, I'm not even going to explain this to you, Van B. Just, all right, all right. How about uh, <laughs> what? What do keyboards look like nowadays? Qwerty. Minerva's how printing about... up the like physical dongle that you have to plug into the. <laughs> oh, great! Another set of keys that if we lose, everything's useless. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. Uh, yeah, and you know, every ten seconds it changes the key that's on the fob, and you also have to memorize a password to go with it. Actually, you no, know, it'd be yeah, really yeah. funny is if it changes like every millisecond so that no one can use it except for an AI because <laughs> you're the only one that can oh. enter that fast. <laughs> I mean, Minerva just wouldn't make a key that you could Yeah, use that would just be funny. Point. Be like, okay, I have fulfilled it your would request be rude. as specified. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I, listen, I, just, I trust your judgment, Minerva. Just, I, I want to keep it safe. That's why I, I, I'm trusting you to, you know, get the file and just hold on to it. But I, I, it really makes me feel a lot better knowing I uh, have a way to get to Scarfy now after how treacherous it was coming here to the shibata system it certainly would make that easier this in that quite, we are agreed it was quite difficult to get here <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i'm sorry about your ship again well i suppose with what i know now uh, honestly once i get the other half of my core back probably just shoot that thing into a sun it's designed to fail Man. Yeah, I we swear, if, apart. that's what we do. We break them. We make yeah, them. We'll take, take components away. And, and I swear I will do my best when putting your core back together, if that's something you want, if you trust in me to try to do. I think when we acquire the other part of my core, we can have a conversation about my options. Mm, sounds like it's not going to be a me job. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we're, like, so we're going to be spending a couple days filling up on fuel, right? Yeah, I think so. so Gwen Wood it's going to be signal four days. The, yeah, the the sailmaster that our you know our activity, if they wanted to float our way and culturally interlocate, well, they would have to sail okay. all the way out to the gas giant to do that with you. Oh, it's much harder for them to move. Never mind. Yes. Yeah, less convenient for yes. them. For some reason, I know I don't think this is the case, but I was picturing the gas giant as like a sun, and I'm like, we're we're gonna ask a living biological ship to come on and to be right next to the okay. sun. It's more like Jupiter, classic okay. gas Fair. giant. Yeah, yeah. space dust. Better. Several famous <laughs> podcasters as well I can think of that are giant gas as well. Um, so Van B, you do get the procedures for 
getting the two halves back together. It requires a chemical application of styrene, butadiene, styrene. And then splitting it apart again in like a 4060, they walk you through how to properly cut an object into a four tenths, six tenths. It's a really specific cut on a circle that doesn't split it exactly in half. Anywhere but where I cut it. Got it. <laughs> I've noticed some people are attempting to write down styrene, butadiene, styrene. It's the chemical name for a hot glue. <laughs> That's really funny. I don't yeah, want to tell you how sense. I attempted to spell it because I'm sure it's wrong, but that's okay. Uh, you know what? If we got if we got some time to kill uh, Minerva, uh, I just wanted to kind of throw this out there that you know, since I've known you, I, I think you have demonstrated you know uh, a lot of loyalty to Captain Quentin and I. And heck, you, you've you've shown a lot of proficiency in kind of combat talents and kind of well protecting us, frankly, when we couldn't protect ourselves. In the Imago Day, see your integrity. So I'm just thinking, you know, I, I don't want you to feel like you need to stick with us if what you'd really want to do is stick with uh, these other four here that we just. Met and so I guess what what I'm trying to say is don't you, I consider the you know the oath that I kind of guilt tripped you on to get you here. I mean I I kind of consider that you know fulfilled. Like if 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 you wanted to go your separate way at some point here, I, that's that's fine by me. I just don't want you to feel obligated to stay with me until I do until I do pass, like you said. Um, you know, I, what what you found here I think is life changing, and I don't want you to miss that opportunity because of. Uh, a promise you made to me. And I cut your bond cord. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that while you were. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I, you know, that I have, a, you know, this, this whole okay well <clears throat> you know i had every intention of following with the two of you until your passings right of, of course I, i've trusted you and i believe that I, yeah and you're saying now that you would be okay if i walked away i we would survive you know be much easier with you of course but i think it kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it kind of feels like you found what feels like a little bit of a lost family here of your own. And I think you should be given the fair opportunity to decide if you want to go with them or not. When, when we finish whatever it is we're about to go do, uh, you know, I think that, that's up to you. You should be given that choice, that, that freedom. Uh, kind of, Speaking a little, a little bit for Captain as well. I mean, it, you probably again notice I, I want to run this by him first, but you know what? We're kind of agreement in agreement on this. A three way ring. <laughs> Minerva's calling the captain. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Captain. Let's get you out. Van V is here as well. Talking about that thing that we talked about, you know? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, I don't know. Van V explained it the same way he explained it to me, but really it's just a matter of I would put it. I've always got your back, and I know you'll always have mine. Whether you're right here right now. You know whether you're right next to me or not. If you get a call to follow these folks on some adventure, not with us, uh, that's what this, that's what I'm saying is, and you feel like you need to answer it, answer it. 
to you also are releasing. I don't want to say, I don't like the context, but for clarity, releasing me from the obligation of your lifespan. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, I'm saying that it, shoot, whenever it turns out you ain't been around that long, you got a lot to figure out. Come yeah, in, but whatever we'll lifespan I got left, who knows what that is at this point. For all I know, it's just, it ends tomorrow. I'm just saying. Can't be. I don't know. We're just saying, don't be afraid to live the life you got right now. Should you need to? Yeah. Should, I, at the end of the day, whenever I just consider you family. It's not about an oath you made to me. I think. Um, I think I'd like to be alone for a little bit. Thank you for talking with me. Sure thing. Here if you need it. You can kind of hear Van V say to uh, Quentin, probably sounds like we're through comms. Do you think a little bit is like her a little bit or a little bit? Like, think just like two seconds or do you think she means like 30 minutes? I never really know. <laughs> what is time? <laughs> uh, you know, you, well, I suppose they'll let us know when they're ready. I keep going back and forth between she and they. <laughs> I got to pick one. <laughs> Wait until you have to make a decision between calling... Minerva or using her baptismal name, Monica. That was, that was another thing that came up during the break. He's like, what if I is forced Sister you guys Monica? to Monica? Is that what we would say? Saint, yeah, well, it, you know, the city of Santa Monica is named after the patron saint of converts, Saint Monica. You could just... I'm, I'm going to make a wide assumption here and assume that all of you have baptismal names. So... Normally when you're born, especially in America, but in most Christian countries as well, your birth name is also your baptismal name, but that is not the case if you convert, because you're given a new Christian name that you don't legally have to change to, but you can use if you want to. Again, not something most of us will have ever encountered because we all have baptismal names that are also our given names. But sometimes when you convert, priests give you cool and rad names based on <laughs> saints or apostles or a lot of Stevens out there. A lot of, you know, a lot of, maybe not a lot of Judases, but Simons. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, Luke, the apostles. Paul, big ones. Sure. Paul, yeah. John. A lot of Johns. Most popular name <laughs> in the entire world. Especially if you include variations of it like Eva, Ivan which is just the Russian version of John or Sean <laughs> all the various ones yeah uh, whenever plans to keep them in suspense okay is there <laughs> anything else you'd like to do before flying between the two suns and going to encounter this gravitational anomaly yeah nothing as the two the ships approach. I do have two questions, actually. Okay. First, I take it, uh, Brother Judas, and I managed to get everything for this. Uh, I'll get the black box. That's the black box. Oh, yes. You have managed to. I mean, you physically have it. Yeah. We have to figure out what to do with it, but we yeah. have it. Um, and the other thing is I wanted to check on, especially since we took the time to do the repairs and stuff, um, of my reprogramming of sensors. Oh. 
because you want to be able to penetrate through the mandate era like baffling programs right sure let's say that's done okay those are my two questions before we okay sail off into what could possibly be the next maybe last episode <laughs> yeah, look at glass yeah you approach a object da, na, 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 na. that defies sensors. Visually, it is difficult looking between the two suns as you fly between them, and the gravitational waves here are immense. As the two suns are orbiting each other, they're also attempting to pull each other apart in the process. And in 100,000 years, they are going to collide and cause a big problem for somebody. Probably not you. You'll almost certainly be dead in 100,000 years. But in the center of that, there is, as you are approaching, an orb of pure blackness that closer you get, the more you see that it is like a black mist. And it begins radiating away. And through that black mist, you begin to see the formation of a vast and endless space a blank space colorless in a way that defies your eyes a space that is metadimensional that you are looking into and with it an enormous factory complex that appears to be working on one Bruchelle class battlecruiser with long gray goo nano whip tendrils of material. And so as the two ships fly side by side, emerging out of darkness, you see this factory complex just making things in the background so vast, it's larger than a planet. And as you approach Quentin, you are subconsciously guided in here even though it's just flying straight, you know it's the right direction to go because the other end of your leash is waiting for you here. Mm -hmm. And over your communications, they are forced into an open channel and you hear a voice say, I had been wondering how long it would take you to arrive here, my visitors. It would seem that you have brought guests. And that's where we're going to end the episode. You get to 3 XP. And now you get to set goals for next time. You better think Sweet. about those goals. because <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> Destroy the Death Star. Find the weak spot. <laughs> Survive the Grey Goo. <clears throat> Take over the Bruchelle. Make it our own. Yeah, that's the one. Cool. I love that your goal is the same as your opponent's goal. Take over the Bruchelle. Mm. They're way ahead of you, because for one thing, they have it. And second off, it's full of gray goo. Mm. Iono, <laughs> we're going to need to clean up on aisle four. <laughs> All right, Iono immediately reminds you that her job description is as a technical advisor and not as a janitor. <laughs> and... And I... refers you to the chief technical officer on board, which is you. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> Touche. Touche. She's outdone me once again. <laughs> Can Van V have reprogrammed 42 or 43 or whatever it is one that's still with him? <laughs> that one little one. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 I'm, pic I'm picturing you what? Like... <laughs> just, just to hang out with him. Okay, I thought you wanted it to clean stuff because it's literally oh, the about, size of yeah. a tiny Coke can. Yeah, uh, just to be clear, say. I don't mean like a full size Coke can. I mean like one of those smaller yeah, ones like, you get on damn. airplanes and shit. And you know, I like to think it doesn't really have a broom. It's just a tiny little air compressor. It yeah, just goes like around. Little, like it gives no, no, some moral support. gravity wave thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. I still want the sound though. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that that is included <laughs> extra. That's a premium. Oh. And, that's it. I'll, I'll I'll add I'll do some modifications. Treat it like it's hey, a defect. The DLC. But I like it. Oh no, you're yeah. jailbreaking it. To... Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Too funny. Kane, you're now authorized to go up to level ten and beyond. Oh, good. So what are you at? Like twelve now? With all your saved up points. 
So what's the... Uh, oh, you can't the, access your sheet. <laughs> Shoot. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, well, yeah, but what's the drawback in taking those levels? There is no drawback now. You took a oh. leap of faith and trusted the Imago Dei, and they have placed within you the bulwarks in your mind necessary to withstand the pressures. And protect myself from insanity with faith. Oh, well, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's be really clear here. If you start undoing the seals that keep your mind from exploding, you will still go insane. But you can go above level 10 now. Okay. Grow. I just wanted it to be a, a faith-based thing where you needed to meet the Imago Day. I didn't know you would already be past level 10 when you got there. <laughs> You're supposed to you come here weighed. a lot earlier in the campaign. You've been measured. We did a lot before we got found here. Wanting. Yeah, you basically you have done found wanting. <laughs> uh, all of your personal quests, fully done your personal quests before coming here. With the exception of Van V. Ah, I feel like I'm going to reverse here. You yes. you did a lot of your personal stuff before. The only thing that's left is going to Scarfy and finalizing the situation. Yeah, you're at the you're at the decision point. This is your loyalty mission. Uh, I was really hoping one of the zombie planets would just the uh, the dust gone wrong. <laughs> Here's the problem: well, is that Quentin we... didn't lock you in ahead of time. He didn't get you your oh. father's. Uh, uh, Krogan armor beforehand. So, so he's gonna he, die. Yeah, he might have to sacrifice you in Vermeer. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Nice. Should have gone to Scarfy to get Sending your father's you in armor. Defense. Sorry, <laughs> I just needed that Krogan armor set. Oh my gosh! If only you had the quads. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> This is another good episode. These are some deep episodes we've had lately. I like it. Good, good, good. Because the philosophical discussion and the revelations are basically nearly over. It's going to be fucking murder central from here on out. Yeah. Might we sure. actually have ship on ship combat? I guarantee <laughs> that at some point very soon there's going to be ship on ship combat. Well, and I'm glad like, we have. Week. And it looks like I'll be doing it on the Golden Goose. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, perfect, I'm not, perfect. I'm I might highly defensive versus a battle cruiser. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, this will be the first time that. that Minerva is going to like. I there's not really like, I mean, character way to avoid it at this point. But I think this at at what is the end of the campaign will be the first time you guys see an AI what character you're supposed cut to completely do. loose. Cut loose, yeah. It's going to be wild. It's going to be nuts. And the ship has a I, sand thrower. <laughs> so yeah. it's, I know. It's AI of, versus AI. Right. Because, because of that, I'm like half tempted to be like, maybe I should just get in a fighter and rename myself Poe. <laughs> See yeah. how it goes. <laughs> and remember, if there is uh, an artificial intelligence connected directly to that other ship, we can't hack it. Just like mm. they can't hack the, the goose. because It kind of though. feels like something AP is prepared for. I do need to warn you before you make any assumptions about how artificial intelligence works, this alien intelligence you're about to communicate with is not bound by the rules in the rule book for human-based artificial intelligences. Mm, it's going to hit right. below the belt. Right. Here comes how the you think it works and how it actually works are, I assure you, quite different. No, we'll see All right. It's definitely a Zerg hive mind. I will say this. There is a non-zero chance that next episode you can immediately end the campaign in the first five minutes. Drive with a positive straight. outcome. With a positive, with a positive outcome. outcome? Positive okay. outcome. Well, now um, the other come alternative down to... is that we're probably going to enter into a ten or fewer episode final-ish arc. Wow! Or you die. Also, a strong possibility. Very plausible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now the question is: How do we win? Is it through psychic powers, through hacking, 
I doubt it's just straight flying. So I'm going to say it rests on what if I told you it was the power of friendship? Would you believe me? Oh my god. Hmm. I would. So you're saying my diplomat skill to reroll ones is going to be clutch. <laughs> be Dynamis, what I'm going to say is this. a nice meal. How, forget how the dice treat you. How in roleplay has your diplomat skill worked out across any campaign we've been in together? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Oh, man. As long as you think that, that's all you need to know. If you just, believe just remember, in yourself and you think that your dice are good enough to make it work, I can't stop. Oh you. yeah, I mean, don't you remember when Cosmo got that first sponsor? How happy he was, and you're like, I just want to say, this is like a very basic, not important sponsor. I'm like, yeah, but they're giving him an all-you-can-eat buffet. He thinks he's made it. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been working on Solaris Nights with a K lately, so I've been thinking about no Solaris Nights without a K a lot. Uh -huh. A lot of stuff happened to that. It was yeah. Oh, and Eric keys. posted that uh, that fortress that looked a lot like it the did. one that I designed for. What the hell? A lot like yeah. it. Yeah, and by I, I really just mean Sidious because I'm pretty sure he's the one that made the map for me. I was, I was, I was gonna just keep giving you credit. <laughs> you don't need to give me credit. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was you and him that made it. That one was mostly him. I made the one okay. where I cut corners and it literally mattered in the fight. <laughs> oh, the uh, Lake Parvis? Yes. Yeah, that one. Holy cow. I mean, that was literally like eight episode long fight, though. So, you know. I can't believe the cutting corners actually mattered. It ma Not only did it matter, I think someone couldn't even load. It was it Soundwave couldn't even load the map because it was too big and yes. had to yeah. be on discord and get a broadcast of someone that was there <laughs> it was just too big his computer couldn't handle it but hey if you want to have 12 people show up and play live against you know 30 plus opponents you literally have to have a map that big true grim dark Who's james open? purposely stepping back exactly far enough to get out of my range and into his range Every single round for 10 rounds is infuriating. He fucking had me locked in. I was so mad. <laughs> Rad was begging me. He's like, is this how you want the show to end with all the players losing and dying? And I was like, I've seen this show before, Rad. You're going to be fine. That's what uh, I think it was the very first like trial runs we had in Slayer Snights where you told us our opponents beforehand. Like, I think everyone just worked out the ranges that were optimal for them. And then as long as they won initiative, just were like, all right, well, we're going to stay at this range every single time. Yeah. And that's why I, I started going hard into the initiative thing. And then you stopped telling us our opponents. And I was like, oh, shit. And then you let us <laughs> research it. And I was like, aha. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Light mechs for the win. <laughs> they were my favorite to watch. You had a lot of personal fans who like you and no one else. I was okay with that. <laughs> I was never hurting for money, that's for sure. It makes me very max. worried about doing Solar Sites so too. Many max. <laughs> I just I kept I think I used all my like my points in getting skills for people. I think that's what I kept doing. Worked out well. I, I just like used most of my experience uh training rookies. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of it, y'all were like Two levels ahead of me. <laughs> you invested oh, I, dividends I into the storyline. Yeah, yeah I Kane took care of that I problem felt, for me. I felt that pain. I put a lot of effort into training Saya. <laughs> yeah, it paid a off really well. Yeah, yeah it, it did. I mean, for a while it did for her. <laughs> it actually, I know, I, I keep joking at that, but that, that happened, but it turned to Jai, I think, but it was a pretty strong like story arc for. Uh, Cosmo trying to leave the firefighter and then coming back to it later. I think it turned into a strong story arc for Saya as well. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Any closing thoughts for today? It was a long, long ass episode, and a it lot, a good of, one though. A lot of discussion. It didn't feel long. A lot of time like it, it didn't felt feel so like log for me. <laughs> like it's two we like ninety minutes long. in before we took the break, and it didn't it didn't feel like that to me. It so, felt like that to me for sure. Mm. 
Of course, I've been waiting to have some of these conversations for uh, like yeah. six in, six out of game actual months. <laughs> I was like, surely they're gonna make it there to kick off all their storylines, right? But no, <laughs> you've seen how we do this. <laughs> I, I guess I'm I'm just I mean, maybe we find this out later, but like. We How somebody. are we supposed to I'm... get there if even at our high levels we still sucked at getting there, <laughs> jumping? I feel like there were easier like bonuses for us to grab if we were paying a little attention. There were more drugs. Rogue Piscadarian not only had been there but had a ship that could get there. Yeah, but of course you you know betrayed him and sold him out to the perimeter agency, which. You also didn't Certain really make good friends with him because you were really frightened of his like strange I'm a super sister, villain. wife, clone, <laughs> daughter, uh, incest, infinite life, psychic, fuckery, whatever the hell he, he was, was doing. He was a James Bond villain. Like... <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I also I, I have a suspicion that if I had uh chosen to data delve instead of deciding that i wanted to protect the crew oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah for oh, sure yes yeah. if you I had just, just fallen, so much. Get there. <laughs> yeah the, that that entity is the thing you're talking to right now at the end of the episode just to be clear we're finally yeah. there i remember being like are you sure you yeah. don't want to know this <laughs> i would highly like to tell you. <laughs> relevant campaign backstory information you were like no i want to be oh. safe and i was like Arr! I can't do anything about that. It's a, it's your choice. This is back when Minerva was was was, you know, intentionally good to protect the crew. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that was back before I blew up the psychic planet. Yes. <laughs> then Van V walking out of a a room that maybe he shouldn't have walked out. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of like critical decisions where we just walked away from information or walked away from. I don't know. Didn't get the link installed and said chose hyperboat. <laughs> there were so many huge decisions. But like, you got hyperboat episode. Yes, yeah, you, you got the hyperboat here. episode. You've and had and we found various out later that objects that have precognitive code on it, and you haven't brought it back to Fairy. Uh, mm. You've your entire relationship with Fairy has been super cagey. Uh, no I mean, Speaking Fairy was like, "I'd like to analyze your code," and you're like, "That would be lobotomizing. I can't let you do that." And they're like, well, we can't trust you anymore then. Speaking of, you know, powerful entities and organizations, we are very good at making enemies. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. But see, yeah. the, the reason I think Number that one. is, I had someone say a comment about it, was that you guys are so interested to get involved at high-level politics. And, like, you, you're like the Avengers. Like, you step up, you make it clear that you can operate at this like higher plane but you're not like strong and no one likes you because you keep pissing people off you just show up and you're like hey we're here and they're like you want to be our friend and you're like yeah not really and they're like okay well i guess you're our enemy then if you're not our friend so yeah we keep we keep doing the seattle freeze to everyone yeah yeah, <laughs> hey, the great yeah we are the rogue everybody AI sees you as an independent agent yeah you're like the reverse I, yeah. switzerland you're a switzerland that nobody likes Incredibly active and <laughs> really funny. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Pardon me. I'm just going to break this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you need that? Okay, that's mine. <laughs> oh, and just you kicked off a huge uh, internecine drug gang war as well at your behest or, of or... murder. Let me hear. Let, let me let me just throw this out to you. Sure. Did we create a situation that made it very easy for Midipile to come in and just clean up a whole system? They did clean that system up. Hit the, the That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we it. we made that possible because we created the chaos that they used as a ladder. Yes, we enabled the reset button. <laughs> but that I organization, don't I don't know. That's up to you. That organization operated in more than just that system. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And they showed up for something that wasn't there. So yeah, I, know. I don't know if we're going to get any brownie points for that. Oh, moment. they're not our friend because of this. I'm just saying. <laughs> the interesting they got thing to destroy is a that... wretched hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> it's so strange how you managed to make it work out that Carlito wasn't on Omuro 9, 
and was your friend and mm -hmm. was also invested in gathering psychics and was invested in turning the other people in Omura 9 into his enemies, which had the side effect of having all of the anti-psionics being on Omura 9 at the time it was dismantled and everyone was arrested. So you um. have... I don't know if you did it intentionally. You did manage to get all of your enemies in the criminal organization in one place and then have that place get raided by the cops. You know, I, I basically <laughs> guarantee you didn't do it intentionally, but that is what happened. Yeah. Intentions not, don't matter. Results is, do. Is, All right. Well, Emmanuel Kant has a lot to say to you, motherfucker, but okay. <laughs> This is a party that does not do intentions. Like, no, things no. just happen around us. We just do. We have many intentions. We just don't know how intentional they were. Okay, again, Emmanuel Kant wants to speak to all of you, okay? <laughs> you know, this just makes me can't wait for a James review on, uh, um, what's that show called? One, your, your other show where James is like, oh, we're going to do employee review sessions. I, and I was like, I can't imagine what oh, they would look like on this show. Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, your employee I'm reviews do in the next episode, Kane. You 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 wrote oh, them yeah. of the other two employees, right? You have them ready to go, right? Yeah, just like our goals for the show. It seems no, like they'd no, be a lot more fun like to write for a for game than in real life. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I got. I think I tell my team if you spend more than five minutes, you're taking too long. <laughs> well, you guys do need to write goals for the next episode of this show. I we'll let the goals it. ride this time because I knew it was just going to be revelation after revelation and you'd be like, oh man, now I don't want to do that thing anymore, which is exactly <laughs> like something Judamus would say. <laughs> well, now I want a new shiny object. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to hit Ludeman with, you were looking for a form of psionic construction, but the psionic construction was inside you all along. That's just brutal. <laughs> the journey oh, made so you the destination. Yeah. That's, that was so good. Is. I do have a question. Word. My long-term goal. Yeah? Discover the rest of the secrets of my origins and the Yamago Day's presence here. I think that, that in the next episode, it's very probable that will be completed. Okay. I would say the Imago Day part's done. The secret of your origin's about to come up in conversation, and you're not going to okay. like it. I mean, I already don't, so it's only going to get worse from here. Sure, 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 <laughs> sure, 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 sure. And you were right. You called it a long time ago when I was like, I'm curious. Can I choose to fail this save? And you're like, you'll be mad later. Don't do it. You're <laughs> 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 like, I know you. Just... Just, you don't want to. I, do, I promise you don't want to do that. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> what can I say? It's almost like I've been in a game with you before, you know. <laughs> Any closing thoughts for tonight, friends? Are we good for next Monday? Yeah. 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 I see thumbs up, I see head nods, I heard a yes. Okay. It could end in five minutes, could kick off a new arc. It could be the last episode as everyone dies fighting a super warship. I don't know what's going to happen. And that's really why I play this game. Is Can't wait for us to pick an option that hasn't been put on the table yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? This is going to be the first time that the ship combat rules have happened in the entire I know, game. right? It is. It's crazy. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. I basically guarantee that if ship combat comes up, it will not go well for your side. <laughs> you mean the Bruchelle, the thing that's designed to utterly, like, crush Dominate uh, ships planets? of your size, like... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean... It's no, I'm, original I'm construction doesn't give it a lot of armor. It just has an enormous amount of weapons and speed so that it never gets hit. I.e. a battle cruiser. But it is meant to pacify whole planets by itself. 
and you're just yes. two ships and also two fighters. Yeah. Do you think it's you really dicey. stand a chance? I like how Dunamis is like, I'm going to look for the exhaust port. I want to desk mm -hmm. it. Exactly, right? Trench run, where are we at? Yeah, so I course. just have to do a little more research on how yeah, Smoke Jaguar run. lost, and we'll be Trench fine. run with a frigate. <laughs> yeah, just going to fly a Nebulon B down there in the trench, upside down, like a reverse axis. Big trench. You said it was bigger than a planet. <laughs> for the station. I didn't say the battle uh, the battle cruiser was bigger than a planet. I said the yeah, station. That's fair. Was. That's fair. Yeah. I actually didn't describe it as a station either. I described it as a factory. No. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yono, know, can you just whip up a nuke Board for us cube. real quick? <laughs> yep, so that's how nukes work. You just <laughs> whip them whip up. Them up. <laughs> and you know, there's um, no way that factory has bing, bing, boom. at all. <laughs> You know, my favorite part about this setting is that nukes are basically worthless as weapons, with the exception yeah. of low-tech planets, because they have nuclear snuffer technology to put nukes out. So make it so that all WMDs are, like, truly high-tech and evil, like zombie plagues or super AI viruses. But, like, just nuking a planet is nearly impossible unless it's fucking Stone Age. What kind of person out. would come from a Stone Age planet that other people wanted to nuke, Ludeman? Who would do that? You know, one that's a little sad. <laughs> one that has giant capybaras. That's true. It does have giant capybaras. They are now a threatened species. Yeah. All right, that's gonna be it for us, audience. I got I got to stop the bullshitting so that I can go back to watching the Ratfish Part Two.